Okay, so that's number three. Let's look at number four. Number four is asking us at 298 Kelvin, the Henry Law's constant for oxygen is that. And then it's asking, there's three, it's three parts here. So it's a three part question. So I might actually, instead of redoing one of, the, one of these problems, I might have to, let me just look at the solution for the sake of time to just see, uh, to see if their logic is sound here. So let's look at number four this is at 298K Henry, Henry law constant for oxygen is 0 0.00130 molar per atm so the air is 21.0 percent oxygen he's asking us at 298 what is the solubility of oxygen in water as opposed to air so i want the solubility of oxygen in water Ex oh, exposed to air sorry exposed to air at 1.00 atm here so when we look at a here as as you can see a here what they're doing is they're taking their mole fraction of oxygen per air, right? Because I remember here, for oxygen here, I know air here is, um, I'm solving for air here, right? So air here is not, air is only 21.0% uh, percent oxygen. So I can say, I can, I'm gonna do the partial pressures. They're relating this to partial pressure, right? Because I don't have the concentration of air. Obviously, I only have the, I only have the concentration here uh, of oxygen. So I'm going to relate this to partial pressures. And what, and what we can do is we can solve for um, the pressures is, is we can relate that to the concentration, right? So we know that um, uh, PV equals nRT and N and P are going to be uh, proportional to each other. So we, if, we in a constant, if we're in a constant volume, uh, we're going to assume it's being in a constant volume. Therefore, it's going to have the same percentage of pressure here. So it's proportional. So we can say the partial pressures of O2 here, the PO2 here, is that what they're doing, equals basically the mole fraction of oxygen times the pressure of air, right? So the mole fraction here is simply just 21%, so 0 0.21 multiplied by uh, 1.0, right? We're assuming it's 1.0 um, ATM here. So this here, or no, that's not an assumption, that's given to us. So this here would equal, uh, this here would equal 1, 2, it would equal, uh, let's see, 0 0.21 times 1.00 is simply just 0 0.21, right? 0 0.20 partial pressures of O2 here, so that's good. And then, so this is going to be the partial pressures of O2, right? And then finally, what we have here is we can we can now use the um, the Henry's law. Henry law's constant here is 0 0.0130 mol molar per atm, right? So if we have m over atm, what we can do is now solve for the molar solubility, right? So we know the molar solubility here equals K, which is Henry's constant times the partial pressure of O2 here, right? Or you can say uh, Henry's constant here. So maybe I'll put K subscript, subscript H here to make it a bit more um, noticeable. This is the partial pressures of O2 here. And then the molar solubility equals now, I know it's, uh, let's see, from 0 0.01, so 0 0.00130 molars per ATM times 0 0.20 atm here right and this would equal the molar solubility again atms cancel out and this here i'm left with this molar molarity and that's going to be the solubility right so 0 0.001030 times 0 0.21 will give us a value of 2.73 times 10 to the negative 4 molarity here and this is going to be the molar solubility for uh for air here uh, for or sorry, of oxygen in water exposed to air at one uh, atm here. So we could do the exact same thing for B, right? For B here, uh, it's just changing our atm here. So if I if I did B here, maybe I'll do some blue. I can do the exact same thing. I can find the partial pressure again, and it's going to be uh, zero point two one uh, of O two here would equal. Let me just do this as a side here. Is it going to be exact same thing, right? So exactly. So 0 0.21, because again, it's the same percentage, but multiplying here by a different pressure, right? I have 0 0.897 in this case. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.87, uh, 0 0.897 to find the partial pressure 
of O2 here, and this here would get me 0 0.21 times 0 0.897 would give me a number of, so the partial pressure here is 0 0.18837 ATM. So this is the mole fraction here. And then I can relate it to Henry's constant, right? So again, I can find that molar, molar solubility equals the Henry's constant times our partial pressures of oxygen here. So molar solubility obviously equals 0 0.00130 molarity of per atm multiplied by our, our partial pressure of o2 right which is 0 0.818837 atm again uh, the atms are going to cancel out so i'm left with just um, molarity here right so 0 0.00130 times 0 0.18837 will give us a value of 2.44488 times 10 to the negative 4 molarity here and as you can see um this solution is also correct right 2.45 i i they rounded it to two decimal places that's totally fine and then finally for c let me zoom out here for c here is, is if atmospheric pressure suddenly changes from 1.0 to 0.897 at 298 how many how much oxygen will be released from 4.90 liters of water in an unsealed uh, container so if we have here if it changes from again one atm to 0 0.897 uh, atm at the constant uh, constant um at a constant uh constant temperature of 298 kelvin how much oxygen will be released right so it's talking talking about the c here so c here is again we have here uh moles of o2 release is simply just these two uh these two guys subtracted each other by, by each other right so basically i'm going to have this is a molarity, so I'm going to convert this into moles first, right? So I want to convert into moles, and then I can now then convert it into uh, molar mass, right? So let's see, I have 4.90 uh, times 10 to the negative 4. So let's see. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have, I'm going to convert these moles, molar solubilities. So again, this one was at 1 atm, and the blue one here is at uh, 0. 0 0.897 atm so let me just do this for you so know that concentration equals moles over volume right so therefore moles equals c times v right and the moles here equals the concentration which is 2.73 times 10 to the negative 4 molarity times uh, 4.90 uh, times 4.90 because remember, mole, moles here is basically moles over liters, right? Times 4.90 liters. This here will give me our moles, right? Our moles here would get, I would get 2.73 times 10 to the negative 4 times 4.90. And we got here 1.337. Oh, shoot, sorry. 1.3. I'll, I'll just round it to two decimal places here. So 1.34 times 10 to the negative three moles and this is at 1.00 atm and then what i can do with this guy here is i can do the exact same thing for if it was at uh, 0 0.897 right so again moles here equals c times v so moles is again 2.4488 times 10 to the negative four this was moles per liter times, I have a constant volume, right, of 4.90. So my moles here would equal, I have 2.4488 times 10 to the negative four times 4.90, which will give me 1.199. So 1.1, actually again, I'm gonna round it to do that's two decimals. So 1.20 times 10 to the negative three moles. And then what I can do now is I have these two moles here. This is one is at uh, 1.0 atm, and one is going to be at uh, 0 0.897. So what I can do is kind of find, I can find the difference between these two moles, right? So I can subtract both of these numbers here, and that's what they're going to do with the moles here, right? So I'm going to subtract these two guys here, and you're going to get, Let's see, uh, 1.34, let me subtract these numbers for you. 1.34 times 10 to the negative three minus 1.2 times 10 to the negative three. So you are going to get uh, 1.608 times 10 to the negative six here, which is 
uh, slightly odd here. So let me just check their math here. Since moles is volume times molar solubility, they just put negative. Oh no, 4.90 here is the that's that's good. That's good. Minus 4.90 times 2. Point, uh, yes, times times 2.44 here. So that's fine. So this math is good here. I don't know how they got this number here. Let me just recheck my math. So I'm going to get, again, I have 2 point, I have 1.34 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 1.20 times 10 to the negative 3. Yeah, I have 1.4. Sorry. I, yeah. So my value here, the difference here, I think I inputted something wrong in my calculator here. But basically, I'm doing the moles of, so let me write down, let me write down the moles here. The moles of O2 that are being released equals basically the moles at 1.00 atm minus the moles at 0 0.897 atm, right? This here would be 1.34 times 10 to the negative 3 moles minus 1 point, I believe it was 1.20 here, times 10 to the negative 3 moles. And then this would give me um, this value here is 1.4, right? This here is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4 moles here. And once we have our moles of O2, we can simply just convert this into uh, into group mass, right? Because we want the uh, how much oxygen here. So I'm going to convert this into mass here by saying, and I know that moles here equals mass over molar mass. So therefore, my mass here is simply just moles times our molar mass, right? So mass here equals our moles, which is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4 moles, times our molar mass of oxygen. Remember, oxygen here is O2. It's a diatomic molecule, so O2 is simply just 15.99 times 2 here. I'm going to round to 16, uh, 16 for the sake of uh, for quality of life. 16 times 2 is 32 grams per mole. So finally, moles cancel out, and I get grams, right? So I have, again, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4 times 32 would get me... My value here is I have 4.48 times 10 to the negative 3 grams here. And this here is how much oxygen will be released from 4.90 liters of water in an unsealed container. And as you can see, this here is the it's almost the correct answer. Again, it's probably some rounding errors, uh, but it's the same magnitude and it's almost the same number here. So the solution here is correct. Uh, they probably carried more decimal places than I did. And now great analysis here as well. So yeah, they probably carried more decimal places, hence why it's like my number is slightly off. But the the work here is the work here is great.